Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, where wealth strategies and investment wisdom collide. Featuring your distinguished host and certified financial planner, Bart Zanbergen. Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, where wealth strategies and investment wisdom collide. I'm your Actually, I'm your co-host today, Bart Zanbergen. Sitting in the driver's seat today is none other than Letitia Burbaum. Letitia, it's all yours. Hold on, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Paul, I wanted to let everyone know the she wizard. She has been <laughs> angling for that seat since the day she came in here. And finally, the good guy that you are, you let her drive the car here. I don't know if it's sympathy or empathy <laughs> or it's just given up for the day. <laughs> I've given up for the day. He's <laughs> just, just too tired to keep fighting it here. Well, last of uh, the show that we pre-taped, which won't come out until a week, I'll give a little preview, is one right of now. the best. It's, a, it's one of our longest shows, but it also is chock full of fun stuff and fascinating information. So I'll just get, leave it at that. little teaser comes out next week. Next week. And it was a fun show, a fun day. and uh, It was. I really enjoyed it. Fun so after to, show. And you're going to have to find us on our social media to see the fun photos. They're pretty comical. And you can see all the wines that we brought in. And I did what I aspired to do. I surprised Letitia. He did. Always she keeping me on my toes. didn't think I knew anything about the subject at him. We'll just leave it at that. So. so thanks, Paul. So I wanted to go back to our overall goals. And what we want to be able to make sure that we're addressing today is what keeps you up at night. And so a lot of times people might be thinking about this, but at the end of the day, they might be afraid to ask the question. They don't really know where to look. And a lot of times they just go to Google and you get a variety of options, but everyone knows that you can get any answer you want out there, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to align with what your core values are and what your goals are in life. And so that's why we're here to kind of help guide you with that, what that looks like. So a lot of times, um, I do want to also just point out, I know that we talk about Bart is a CFP and he is also a sommelier, but no one ever talks about one of his other certifications that he has. He's one, got uh, more of them? He oh, does, my goodness. He does. So he's a CDFA, and that's a Certified Divorce fin- Financial Analyst, right? Is that that's, the, yeah. that's the term? That's, yep, that's I it. never even heard of such a thing. I what is know. that? you got to explain what that is. Please, please. So that is a professional that has some um, continuing education and certification in the area of divorce. So I work closely with divorce attorneys in helping. Typically, I w- uh, w- it happens in one of a couple of ways. One, we may come in as just the general financial analyst, kind of helping both sides with the analyzing of balance sheets and equalizing assets and so forth. More often, we come in representing one side, typically our client, with that expertise, just to make sure that he or she is is fairly uh, represented. And can I just take a second and point out, we did a couple shows a couple of years ago on this subject with a gentleman, an older gentleman, who is a forensic accountant. And he gets called in usually very high-profile cases, very wealthy couple. Quite often, there is an economic discrepancy the man or the woman makes most of the money, and suddenly there's a divorce, and suddenly the money ain't there. Mm, it's all gone. There isn't supposedly as much money there. And his job was to go in and figure it out, ferret it out, what do these businesses work to make an equitable split? And it ain't so easy. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a different level. Um, if you're in a divorce, that's something that you want to try and stay away from. No disrespect to the forensic accountants, uh, but... For one who has to go through it, it's, it's excruciating. Oh, it's yeah. Painful. Well, he talked about high-profile case. I think the one that was a couple years ago, the the guy who owned the uh, Dodgers. I forget his name. Mm-hmm. Jamie McCord or whatever. And how they just, it just was awful and ended up, everybody lost money. The only people who made money are the people searching for it. Mm-hmm. That's right. So a lot of times, if you like it or not, money is sometimes what keeps you up at night, the the stress behind it and how do you manage it? How do you merge it? How do you split it? And what does that look like? And how does it affect you? And the decisions that you make all have consequences. So sometimes, um, you know, avoiding it is also a decision as well. So that's what we want to talk about today. And if you are either, um, or kind of kind of combine the two, but overall, if you are just either getting married, um, some of the things that we want to help you think about and 
a lot of times people have the decision, do we merge our assets? Do we keep our assets separate? And how do we determine what that looks like for a household going forward? And I thought that this was fantastic for Bart and I to have this conversation about this because our ages are very different. So in different stages of your life, you might have different experiences to get to where you are. Um, and, um, And that's what's so great about us working together is we're able to provide different perspectives for all of our, our clients. So, and, and before you outline it, I just uh-huh. have one question. Do, yep. you, do you recommend that people do um, prenups or in some way Paul, you have a, a way of this? taking my thunder. <laughs> I know, because well, I, I think that's where you're headed, and that's, that was, we've done some shows on that stuff, yeah. and it's, that's the big look at Paul McCartney and all the famous people that said, oh, I need a prenup, I'm in love, and then all of yeah. a sudden it comes back to bite them, big time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can I first point out how delicate Letitia was in saying how different our ages are. <laughs> <laughs> I let that slide because if, if if she's different, I'm I'm way different. <laughs> exactly. So, go ahead, Bart. but but that whole idea of prenups because you're talking about figuring out how you're going to split up the money and who, who's is what and how are we going to do this? Do you put it in a plan? Do you put it on a piece of paper? Do, does it become a legal document? So you know, I th- I think. Like with many things in life, it all starts with a plan, mm-hmm. and and part of that plan is really talking about the financial goals. So if a couple is getting together, I think it's important that they discuss, hey, what's what's important? You yeah. know, are you on the same page with what they're trying to accomplish? Part of that conversation then will be, well, we're going to keep our stuff separate, and we'll have this in common, uh, and then which might lead to the conversation of the prenup. Um, something that I'm, that as we go through this, I'm finding really, really, um, interesting and that we know people right now that are going through a business merger. And, um, a lot of these things are the exact same things as you take on a partner. So while this applies, everything we're talking about applies to, or is intended to apply about a marriage, but it also applies to a business. But merger. It ha- it's, yeah. people don't treat it the same. That was the point of the art, the stories we did before. You are merging assets, particularly if you've got a lot of money yeah. coming together. Right. We don't approach it in that same business sense because it has this veneer of love and trust and, and happiness added to it that somehow is supposed to. You, you wouldn't, even if you loved your partner, your best friends for life, you would put it down on paper. But if you get your your marital uh, best friend, suddenly that's supposed to be different. No, you definitely bring up a great point, And I think that that's something that... Um, it's a personal preference. So sometimes people feel, I've heard in the past, that it gives them a bad, um, I don't yeah, know, it's a bad taste in their mouth. Yeah, yeah, bad start. Yeah. It's like you're planning to fail. Correct. Correct. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate that. Um, but absolutely. So if things you might want to take in consideration is like, for example, meet with your wealth advisor or financial advisor. And when you're sitting down, kind of talk to them and say, OK, look, you already know what my overall goals and objectives are. We've already met. Um, we you already know what I have. And then come in together. And sometimes I can't tell you how many times that people come in together and the husband and wife might not or or people two people together getting ready to get married they might not be on the same page at all. And a lot of times, I can't tell you how many times in these meetings that they are learning about each other with us in this meeting. And it's a, it's a great environment for us to be able to provide, you know, a safe place for people to be able to talk about their finances and not necessarily talk about the emotions behind it, but really talking about, you know, where where they want to be overall with Can goals. I just give you one quick case? Of a very good friend of mine, I won't identify what he does because I don't want to give it away, but he's a makes a lot of money. Uh, he's a, a service provider, and he got married for the second time. And the woman, after he got married, found out he she had like a substantial debt he didn't know about, like fifty thousand bucks or something. And he was horrified. And and she didn't make any money. He made all the money, and it's the assumption is he's going to pay this off now. And he's like, well, I wish you told me. And it, it, it almost broke them up the very first year they were together because it was such a shock to him yeah. that she wouldn't disclose it. And it turned out that she was kind of embarrassed and didn't want to talk about it, and and it was just. Well, one of our one of our pre marriage um, on our pre marriage checklist, one of the first things is is obviously getting to know each other financially. And part of this gathering statements, mm-hmm. and yeah. statements are asset statements, bank statements, uh, show me debt yours. statements. <laughs> show me yours. I'll, I'll show, show you mine. mine. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> but it's uh, so true. I think it's it's all. I mean, yeah, you know, we can get we can get philosophical in marriage and you know honesty and so forth, but that's all part of yeah. of that. Right. So I think that's why it's great. So sometimes you can set up a meeting with your financial advisor and then you bring all those statements in. So then that way it's a area that you can bring it to someone that can help you analyze it and say, okay, overall, what are your goals and objectives? Are all of your um, investments in line? What do you have? What do I have? And then you guys can talk about overall well, then the next step would be like, what are your financial goals in life? What's your long-term goals? What's your short-term goals? Do you want to buy a home? Do you want to buy a business? Do How many you wanna... kids are you going to have? Right. right. All these things cost um, money, and it talks about, and it, all of it affects your long-term but goals. But is it easy? That's what I'm getting at. Is it easy to get this out on the table, or are you bringing out something that one or both of them are uncomfortable to disclose or discuss? Well, we all know that, that depends, right? It depends yeah. on the situation, but yeah. majority of the time... Um, People already have an idea. We're just opening up the platform for them to feel comfortable to talk about it, and we guide them through that. And so, does it open up sort of these, yeah. like with my friend, all of a sudden he delved into a subject that he had never thought of. They're in love. They got yeah. married. And and all of a sudden it was an ugly side that that neither one of them anticipated to discuss here. Well, we talk about financial planning, and sometimes when we dig into financial planning, it's not always roses, right? There's some thorns in there as well. And you're talking about how you're doing with your spending and how you are compared to your savings. And you kind of figure out what works for you guys as a couple. And with that, then we help people create a budget. And then um, also, in addition to creating a budget and working through that, what that looks like, you have to take in consideration, okay, together, are we, are we, um, properly insured? Do we have enough to cover all of our needs in case one person passes on? What is our legacy? Maybe that this is a second marriage, like you said. Are the kids covered in case something happens? Now you're commingling assets. Do you want to make sure that you are changing the beneficiaries to each other, or mm-hmm. do you want to keep them um, the way that they were prior to? And if that's the case, then that's when it comes into the conversation of, hey, do you want to consider a prenup? And that is really of if you created this wealth and you wanted to pass it on to maybe those kids, then maybe you keep those assets separate and you get an attorney involved and you talk about estate planning and you create, do you have joint trust? Do you have individual trust? What's your um, process? What's your path you guys want to go through together? And our role is to really be that quarterback to help them put it all together, create the sta- get the statements and put them together help them with the financial plan, help them coordinate with the estate attorneys, maybe making sure that they have the right right insurance um, together. And then we talk about if they want to open things jointly. And then how does that look for them jointly um, opening up investments together? So it's a whole process. It's not something you do over one meeting, but it's multiple meetings. But do you become almost marriage counselor or therapist in the process? Well, when you're dealing with people's yeah. money, particularly yeah. you know that's, people I mean, with a lot of money and a lot of things, yeah. that's that's kind of our day part of our daily job. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you something. Nothing makes uh, evening dinner more uncomfortable than for a spouse to find out that the uh, that the previous ex spouse is still a beneficiary, or even worse, this oh, this spouse yeah. dies and then the money goes to the ex spouse. That's not good. Oh yeah, I would. Yeah, those that's one I never would have thought of. Calls to have. No, those aren't. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I, I just as you were both were talking, because um, I'm actually just the bystander today. This is the Paul and Letitia show. <laughs> <laughs> but um, don't you believe it? We have t- uh, currently at least two sets of clients who have been married, divorced, and are remarried again. Oh my goodness! So those because they to have the been, same people or yes. oh, that's what I meant. I'm sorry yes. to the same people. Yeah, yes. and so those in each of the case they uh, maintain their finances quite separately. Yeah, have their separate separate trust. I mean, they're still seemingly so they're willing money. to get married again, but they don't want to commingle the money anymore. And they realize it was the money that was um, causing a little a more problem. tension. Yeah. yeah. So then once they did things separately, then each of them were happy. They were able to I would them. love to. I know you can't tell these kind of stories, but someday you should write a book on the stories and what you see. Because I'm just fascinated. This other guy, when he would come in and tell these stories of what happens uh, when you start delving into p- people's personal finances. Yeah. Not only the shocks that come out to him, but the shocks that come out to each other. I didn't know you had that. I didn't know you had a secret account or a little hidden debt or something. Yeah, no, it's great. And that, that actually does come out. So... 
I could just tell a personal story. My husband okay. and I, we went in, we got our, we decided we were going to have children and we wanted to get a trust to be able to make sure we're protecting our asses, taking care of our kids. And while we were doing that, you know, it, we had to bring out all of our statements. So most of them <laughs> came out prior to, but when you're doing your <laughs> trust, all of them come out. And then you're like, oh, I didn't realize you had that there. I'm like, oh, I forgot to tell you that <laughs> I for, one. <laughs> did I forget to tell that's you? That's my emergency money. That's my oh, mad that. money. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Right, that's my Nordstrom's account. No, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it's the. I would say the key takeaways is to be honest with one another. Sometimes you don't have to commingle everything. Sometimes you can have your own um, parameters, and you can kind of ease into what that looks like for your own unique situation. Budget. Make sure that you guys are talking about what are like the absolute needs versus um, together, and then what it looks like for you each individually. Like you talked about before, you might have different incomes, so maybe not necessarily everything is equal, and you guys understand that. And then working towards shared long-term savings goals. Review annually with your advisor. That's we always recommend that. Kind of just do a spot check. Like you go to your doctor annually, go to your wealth advisor annually. Um, Determine your um, benefits of who's going to be the beneficiaries on your account. Maybe that changes. Maybe Uncle, uh, maybe Uncle Peter or, or Aunt Sally. I don't know. Maybe you don't want them to be on there as a beneficiary anymore, and you can change that and update it. Doesn't mean that it's permanent. And making sure you have enough insurance in case the what if, and discuss estate planning. So those are the. When you're getting married, these are things high level, at least to be thinking about and merge while you're merging your assets or either separating assets. Can I just say, I wish that when I was having my trust done with my wife, that she would have come out with this statement with (laughs) several hundred thousand dollars. I would have been so excited. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Another the last comment before we move on Um, this subject, uh, I think the audience knows that most of our clients are considered high net worth or Mm -hmm. ultra high net worth. This concept here has no boundaries. It applies to everybody. It applies to um, anyone, you know, mm-hmm. regardless of your net worth. So um, that's why we thought it would be a good... And let me just give you two examples, because I don't fit into the high net worth clientele that you usually, the, uh, the uber rich or the very rich that you deal with. I, When my wife and I got together, um, she had been married before, and she was willing to set up a joint um, um, system of paying bills in a joint account, which we have had now for 30 years. So we both put money into it, and from that we pay our bills. But she the insisted, beginning, I'm going to interrupt you. From the beginning, you set up a process yes. that you're still using. Still using, yes, See? exactly. And and the and 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 I don't think I'm saying anything that she would mind, but she f- hated the idea. She makes money, and I make money. She hated the idea of somebody telling her, "You can't spend something." Or what are you going to do with your money? That's me, Paul. <laughs> so she said, there is my money, there's your money, and there's our money. And when it's my money, you know, you can ask, but I, I don't want you ever coming saying, well, what did you, I don't want you looking at my statement saying, what did you buy $400 worth of stuff for? It's my money. I earned it. And that's what she hated about her previous marriage. So as much as I disagree sometimes and or think, gee, I'd like to save more or do something, it's her money. And this, and conversely, then I said, well, then you can't come and say if I spent $100 for something in my business. You know, Paul, I'm going to say, I'm going to be real honest here. I yeah. do the exact same thing. and I'm very private, so Bart's probably shocked that I'm even saying this. <laughs> I am exactly the same yeah. way. And at the end of the day, I, I preach for women to... Um, have their own independence, not just rely on their husband. And so having your own job, having your own accounts, having your own stability, having your own credit, all those things make you completely independent. So no matter what happens later in life, you always have. So she felt I'm never going to feel forced to stay or, or, or economically. Bart's laughing at me right now. So I'm actually, I'm laughing at you. I'm laughing at both of you actually. And (laughs) as well, my situation, because my wife is very independent too. What's hers is hers. And what's mine is hers. (laughs) 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 Right. She's in great shape. (laughs) Right. Exactly. And and so you just have to come to the sink. And then, of course, when we've always heard about when my mother, uh, this is an example of what we've all seen, uh, the previous generation, the older generation, when my uh, mother's father died, her mother was clueless. She didn't even know where the bank accounts were, much less what, I mean, we had to go through and create a whole plan for because he did everything and told her nothing. Well, we have a solution. If you are our client, which you should be, if you are our client... <laughs> we should be. I really should. We should yeah, all be. We all should be. But if you're our client, we have a software that we've talked about before with yeah, our financial like planning. Brilliant. And people can log in and they can get access to their accounts. They can see everything all at once. And that way, it gives them a peace of mind. So they don't have to say... 
where is this? Where is that? They can log in and actually see and, it. And, it I, and can I give you an example of how I could benefit yeah. from that this thing? I was thinking this after one one of the other shows. I have a business, and I have so many different accounts set up for this business. Social media accounts, business accounts, trade accounts, whatnot. And each one of them has a password. Yeah. And each one of the passwords are different. I try right. and not use the same one over and over and over again. Yep. And it occurred to me after you guys were talking, if, if I died tomorrow and my wife had to come and either shut down or sell or do something with this business, yeah. nobody would know where those accounts were or how to get into any of them. Because well, I, I don't write them. You know, I'm not supposed <laughs> to write the passwords down, right? That's uh, <laughs> Yeah. It's so true. You have to have a plan. You have to have a plan. Okay, well, we're almost out of time, and we still had one more topic that we wanted to, to cover. I don't know if we have time, Bart, to, to go over it. What do you think? Um, to do the three-minute version. The three-minute version. Why don't we change to the last topic of RMDs, required minimum distribution? It's not sexy. Bart is like, oh, my goodness, I don't want to do that. I've been waiting all week to talk about <laughs> RMDs. I really have. I was hoping, knew you were coming in talking about it. Couldn't RMDs, wait. RMDs. Okay, so the end of the year, it's a big thing. People need to make sure that they take their RMDs, which is a required minimum distribution. It's associated with retirement accounts. Bart, yes. go ahead. You're right, ready to say something. No, I just wanted to make sure you defined it probably so people like, what's an RMD? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a... Um, as Letitia says, it's a required minimum distribution that must come out of your 401ks, IRAs, or any of your qualified accounts. At what age? At starting at age 70 and one half. So if you right. haven't taken money out by then, you have to start. The IRS is is generous enough to let us defer taxes, but they won't let us do it forever. So that um, And people don't want to because then you've got to pay tax on it. So they want to keep it in there. If they don't need it, they don't want to pull it out. So an example would be an IRA... An inherited IRA, a Roth IRA, an inherited Roth IRA, a 403B. He's shaking his head. You, I know. You, 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 you have options. Up. I know you have options. You have options. And then you have your 401k and uh, a Roth 401k. You still have to take an RMD, by the way. I think the Roth, but not the Roth IRA. I think we're, I'm going to challenge you on that. We'll get back okay. to you. We have a challenge on the yeah. table here. We'll have to come yeah. back. It's All a right. single life. It is. It is right here single life expectancy table. But this is the time of year. We're at the end of the year here, 2018. This is when these ugly things come up and you got to take some money out. Oh, they're going to fight over it. They're going to arm wrestle over this. <laughs> here. I'm like, here. But she's circling it. He's crossing it. <laughs> oh, this one? This one? What's that A place? regular Roth IRA? No. No RMD required. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. We'll call it a draw. <laughs> so do people resist this or just forget about it? With these required RMDs, this is something they just put aside because there's penalties. I'm assuming oh, if you don't do it. Yeah. yeah, you can't. I mean, it would be ridiculous to not do it because the fees are are very high, like fifty percent. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So you don't want to you don't want to mess with that. But there's options and there's planning that you can put in place. So, for example, if you want to take an RMD out of one account and then double double it out of one and then not take it out of another, you have those options. So you can oh, work with okay. your advisor to really figure out what's the best strategy to do that. And there's a whole tax planning strategy. We can probably go on and on today about all the options with RMDs, but you should at least be aware of what an RMD is. Here's would, one quick question, uh-huh. and I know we're out of time. Yep. Uh, rules have changed so dramatically uh-huh. up in the air. Uh, 2019, new things are kicking in. I'd like to hear you come back in the coming year and tell us some of those changes and rules and things to be aware of. And how do you plan long term when the when the short term politics suggest the rules are going to change again? Things are always changing. And so that's why you have advisors like us that are aware of what's going on. And we're able to know your specific situation and be able to um, give you recommendations right on the spot and implement it. My only recommendation is make more money. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're plan. doing. <laughs> a good plan. <laughs> All right. So how do they uh, learn about uh, you guys and everything you do here? Uh, are you setting up times to, uh, to, to, to go through end-of-the-year things? Or I know you're always looking for new clients, but uh, uh, you guys have a process you follow. Year-end planning, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm a big believer in this, of year-end planning, making sure that you have everything in order before the year is end, so that way you're maximizing your deductions and um, in, in having a meeting with your CPA ahead of time. But it's and the holidays. Advisors. I don't want to talk about it now. I want I to talk know. about it later. I know. But just making sure you have everything in order and making sure that if you have questions, we're here. We're you know Even though you're on vacation, we're never on vacation, and we're always here and to be able to... 
so that you don't you. have so that you can sleep at night. So you exactly. can check that one off mind. the list. Don't worry about it. It's all exactly. about peace of mind. All right. So you can find us on our, our website. You can log in um, and see us on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. And you can go on and find Bart under your name. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, your... BartZanbergen.com. B-A-R-T-Z-A-N-D-B-E-R-G-E-N.com. It's also my Instagram and Facebook handle. And then our business website is www.optivestinc.com. And Letitia's is? Letitia Burbaum. And um, it's Spell that. Somebody asked me the last time how you spell it. Because it could be B I B E. I know. I know. So it's L E T I T I A B E R B A U M. I go by Tisha. Uh, frequently, so if you look that up, you won't find me. But at the end of the day, you can always find us on Podbeam, or finding our podcast, or you can go on iTunes. So there's a lot of great places you can link us up, and you go to Zamberg and Report, Wealth Strategies and Investment Wisdom, or even just go to Google, and you'll find us. So much stress this time of the year. Why not get one of them off your checklist here? Why not get one of them off your mind here? Perfect. Okay. All right, everyone. See you back Thank next you. week. Cheers. Tune in next week for the latest edition of the Zanbergen Report, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Catch up on our recent shows by visiting bartzanbergen.podbean.com. The Zanbergen Report is also available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Interested in being a featured guest on our show or have a question you'd like to hear us answer? Email podcast at bartzanbergen.com. Bart A. Zanbergen, CFP, and Letitia Burbaum, AIF, are registered investment advisors with Optivest Inc. and registered representatives with Gramercy Securities Inc., member FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services are offered by Optivest Inc. under SEC registration.